Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8 talks about Abraham. By faith, Abraham, when called to go, when called to go, again, this is not a debatable topic. God called him. He commanded, go to the place that he would later receive as his inheritance. Abraham obeyed and went. You see that? Obeyed and went. I want you to underline that. Write that down. This should be the story of your life. I obeyed and I went. I obeyed and I went. I obeyed and I went. This should be the story of your life. I obeyed and I went. Amen? Even though he did not know where he was going. We sometimes want so much of the details. But a lot of times God is not giving us the details because our future is bigger than us. And if we knew all the details, we might draw back in fear. All you need to know in the today that you live, and it always is today, is that God said. And if God said, you know he's not going to lead you into disaster. He's going to lead you into victory. He's going to pay the bills on the journey. And he has a great future for you. That's all you need to know. You need to know God. If he says, you say yes. And if you don't know where you're going, you say yes. And if you don't know the details, you say yes. He'll give you the details when you need to know them. Today, you have one instruction. Take one step forward. That's it, right? So many people want to try to drag their dysfunction into their future, and nothing changes. Pastor, I love God. I love worship. I mean, worship was amazing this morning. I love God. I love God. Great. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll do what? Keep my commandments. John chapter 14, verse 15. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. What is worship? You're honoring, you're you're worshiping who God is. And you're telling him, I love you. Uh, But if you disobey him and you have no intent of obeying him, you don't love him. See, worship is not slow songs. Worship is being obedient. The Bible says your body is to be offered as a living sacrifice, which is your reasonable act of worship. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, Paul was leaving as you have always obeyed, Not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue. Continue what? What's he just been talking about? Obeying, right? Therefore, therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Meaning, the reverence you have for God, you're afraid to not uh, please him. You are concerned about being obedient. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling, not a fear of God, a a fear that you might displease him, a fear that you do not want to displease him. You want to be obedient, for it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose for you. You see, God has a good plan. He has a great plan for you. Like Abraham, he, he's going to do some mighty and, and great things. But to discover that good purpose, you're going to have to decide to be obedient. You're going to have to decide to say yes when it doesn't make sense. You're going to have to decide that for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And I'm going to find out where God's taking us. We're going to go wherever he says. If it doesn't make sense, we're going there because it makes sense to him. Do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure. It's amazing he put that right behind obedience. (laughs) A lot of grumbling happens and you don't want to do something, right? A lot of arguing with God. You become children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky. Listen, when you get there, life has changed. God has changed you. He's changed your environment, changed your culture, changed your people. I mean, he's changed everything about your life, and you look different, smell different, act different, are different. But it starts out with saying yes today. It's always today. Dorinda and I started basically naive and afraid. Let's start a church. Oh, that's a good idea. Let's do that. How do you do that? There's churches everywhere. Why would God want another church? I don't have to understand that. God called us to start this church. We didn't know how to do it. We were afraid. 
I always say being naive sometimes is the best thing that can happen to you. Just as long as you can hear God, then you, you just follow him. He'll fill in the blanks, right? Pastoring, how about TV costing millions? We did, I mean, we knew nothing about television, did not want to do television. I mean, but we said yes. Building million-dollar building, I mean, yes, let, we're bored. Let's build buildings. Let's raise millions of dollars. Come on, folks. I mean, God calls you to things. He calls you. He leads you. And I want to I want to mention this. You know, when you talk about finding your destiny and doing spiritual purposes with our life, so many Christians have this mindset that they're looking for the big thing. You know, I'm called to do this. I'm called to go to Africa and and build all these orphanages, and that's maybe true. But you don't get there starting there. You start today. And so the problem I find is that in our American culture, we have a bystander, spectator sport called church. You see, because we are all raised in the American church model, which we had paid clergy, paid staff that were to be the spiritual people doing ministry while the church people showed up as an event on Sunday morning. We never got it right. You see, the church, you're the church. And see, the pastor's your coach. He's the one that prepares and teaches and trains you to go out into works of service. God has prepared for you the church. See, everyone's called to ministry. But because we were not taught that, what happens when we have a stirring of the Holy Spirit, we come to Christ, we think, wow, I just just really feel a call to ministry. I must be called to be a pastor because it's the only picture you ever had of what spiritual looks like in the American bystander church. Hello. That's how it was growing up. The pastor go visit the people in the hospital. People get offended. Well, the pastor didn't come and see me. Oh, no, but I sent someone. Because you get offended is because you don't understand how church works. See, I'm the coach. Pastors are to teach and train the church, which is you, to go out and do the works of ministry. So when we talk about purposes, people get nervous. I must have missed it. I'm not doing anything great. I should, well, you know, I must have missed God. I should, I be sure. yeah, you need to do something great, like paying your bills on time, taking care of your family, loving your wife today. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Listen, you got to be faithful today to ever find tomorrow. You want to do something great? Start doing it great right now. Listen, you're never going to win your race with apathy. You cannot afford to be settled. Being settled is a slow death. You wake up one day and you wonder what happened to the joy of life, the passion's gone. You've settled. And it's, it's, it's easy to settle when you've won a few battles and you're tired and you've traveled and you've followed the Lord and you're on this mission and, and you come to a spot where you, you do need some rest and God wants you to have rest, but then you just get, you kind of know what the next part of the journey cost. Well, I've come this far. I, man, that was a tough walk, man. That was a tough ride all the way from Earth of Chaldeans over here to Haran. Man, just, we got to take a break. And you know what's ahead of you? 700 more miles of the same, if not worse. And you began to rationalize. You began to think, I deserve a break. I deserve to rest. And you do. But if you take your eyes off the mark, off of the, the, the instruction, you settle, you get lazy, you, 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 you lose purpose, you lose your joy of the Lord, and you become ineffective You don't want to do that. See, he didn't call us just to make us feel important. He called us to get something done. When I stand before the Lord, you stand before the Lord, he's going to ask about the mission that he sent us on. He's going to ask us to give an account for what we did, what he told us to do, what he led us to do. We're given an account for those things he put under our care. And we'll have to give that account. But listen, you were never called to stay. You're, see, you're, you're created, anointed to take territory. In fact, to be honest, you're not happy not taking territory. You're created for the conflict. I know that sounds crazy. But that's why you love games, sports, conflict, and com- competition. You were created for it. You're never going to be happy watching it from the sidelines, friend. You're created to be right there in the middle of it where God's directing every call and pass and every play and you get to walk in the victory. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing, and thanks for watching.